Hey, this is Jason with 4W Knives. Uh, project today is going to be a fantasy knife. Uh, at this point of the video, I do not know the exact knife shape that I am going to go for, but I've decided that I wanted to enter the viewer portion of the YouTube uh, knife challenge. Uh, they've done this for about three, four years. I love watching them. Uh, they've opened it up to viewers the last two times. Uh, this year is a fantasy knife, which is definitely not uh, what I would normally be doing. I'm kind of a meat and potato kind of guy, uh, but I wanted to enter this, so I'm going to go ahead and, and try my best. Uh, at this point in the video, like I said, I'm not really sure what I'm making, but I do know that I want to do Damascus, uh, and it's going to be a twist Damascus. So I'm going to work on that. It is extremely hot uh, right now in Oklahoma. I think it's about 105. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this forged out because this time of year is not the best time for me. I uh, coach and I teach, and my season gets is basically kicked off right now. So I just work when I can. Uh, so I'm going to have to try to take care of every opportunity to get this uh, thing built by their... A deadline for the competition. So I'll let you watch this film and uh, I'll give a little pointers as I go. All right, so at this point, I've become more aggressive with Locksburger Press. I've got it on my more aggressive dies, which is pressing it a harder press as well as lengthening it a little bit. Uh, something that I didn't show on camera is I also narrowed uh, this billet to make it a little bit easier to work with. The roller mill thins it out and we get it to, I think I got it to about 0 .30 uh, and about, I think it was 11 or 12 inches long, give or take. Uh, it was just perfect enough that I could cut this into four sections and it was able to get my layer count to around 60. Of course, there's gonna be a lot of waste uh, anytime that you're doing forge welding, but I started with 15 layers, cut it into these four sections, so that gives me 60 uh, on my layer count, which is in a high count, uh, but it's definitely not a low count. And then I go all the way through the forge welding process once again. While I have not done a full twist Damascus billet as of yet, this being my first time, I know by watching some of the videos that I need to get it to a square uh, billet. Uh, usually you have a more of a rectangular one. Um, I found while this process, my uh, press is not very good at this. Uh, it, it's just not square enough to get the billet square. So I got it down to a decent shape, and then I thought, well, I might as well try the roller mill. I started with the longer side and just uh, kept going until it was close to the shorter side. And eventually, I was able to get it square. Uh, after you get it square, you have to get rid of all the hard edges. I didn't want to try my press again, so I just went to the anvil with a hammer and basically turned my square billet into more of a round billet. I was a little bit nervous uh, whenever I started to do the twist. Uh, I wasn't positive if my little twister gadget that I made out of this gigantic uh, pipe wrench that I had laying around that I've never used, I was afraid my weld would break. And I was also just afraid that I was gonna do something wrong. Twist it when it was too cold, twist it at a funky angle. I was just knew I was gonna shred this uh, billet but I went ahead and I, I put several good twists on it. Hopefully it's enough to have a, a, a good effect. Uh, I guess we'll see once we get it all finished up. All right, so I've got a little better idea of what direction I'm gonna go. I've had a couple days to think about it. Uh, this is the Twist Damascus. I'm going to cut it in half, which puts it at just a little over six inches. I'm going to do Go My, um, use 1095 for my core and use a couple of uh, pieces of 15 and 20 
just to give it a little bit more contrast. Uh, I've got the idea of what kind of blade I'm going to do. Um, got the handle in mind. I've got this, which was gifted to me. I believe it might be an antelope or something like that. I really don't know, uh, but it's going to look cool. It's going to look fantasy-like. So, uh, anyways, uh, I'm going to get this uh, cut, ground, clean, stacked together, and I'm also going to do a Damascus guard. So I'll show a little bit of that. I'm going to forge weld this one and the Damascus for the guard at the same time. So. Uh, I'll show a little bit of that, but the video is already getting long and I still got a lot to do. So as you can see here, I've decided that my guard is going to be a twist Damascus as well. It is only 15 layers, so I figured it would still give a pretty good contrast to the blade itself. I don't really want it just to blend in and look exactly like the blade. I want it to stand out a little bit. So hopefully I can achieve that goal. All right, so I've got the billet uh, forged out. Got my uh, blade shape drawn on. I'm gonna go ahead and do some stock removal just to try to keep my core centered. The core doesn't have to be centered because uh, all of it is good cutting still, but I think it'll look a lot better if it is. So that's what I'm going with. Um, so I'll cut this out. If you notice, I'm trying to save this portion in case I wanna do a knife later on. So I'm gonna put a short uh, little stubby tang and then I'll weld an extension onto it to go into the uh, horn. All right, I've decided that I'm going to do a hollow grind on this blade. And from the beginning, uh, it was pretty evident this was gonna be an interesting grind. The little spot right near the handle, uh, the little, I guess you call it inset or whatever uh, part of the blade, it's not uniform. Uh, it was difficult to grind and it was uh, challenging to try to figure out what was gonna look best. I ended up going with uh, trying to keep the same line from the belly of the knife all the way through this little spot by the handle. Uh, I'll show a, and not a finished grind, but an almost finished look at it here in just a second. Uh, but it was a challenge. I, I'll be interested to see once I get it heat treated, if I'm able to keep a good edge on it. You can see right there. After I quench it, put the knife in the temper for a couple hours, I decide that's a good time to begin working on the guard. Uh, I use the hammer just to get the rough shape and then I'm gonna grind it to the final shape. All right, it's been about three weeks since I was working on the guard in the video. I've had to cut out quite a bit of the video because it's already getting around that 10 minute point and I've still got quite a bit to show. So I thought I'd show progress. I have heat treated and etched the guard. You can see the twist pattern 
but I think the steel that I used was not dissimilar enough. Uh, I had used some uh, saw blade and some band saw blade and they just didn't etch differently. So I'm guessing they must have been a similar steel, but it's not not a terrible deal. Uh, I, you can still see the twist. I'm gonna coffee etch it so it'll be dark. I still think it's gonna be a good look for what I need. All right, I came into a couple of issues. Okay, here's the inside of the horn. If I put that up, see if I can show. You can see there's no way for really for me to make it meet up and look good on the guard. So my solution, I took a piece of, let's show it here, took a piece of walnut, put uh, two pieces of black leather or dyed leather on the outside. I'm going to fit it up next to it, put the horn on it, and then shape this portion to where it meets up with the guard well and it meets up to the horn as well. In order to do all of this, I'm going to do something that I have not done yet. And that is going to be, I think they call it bedding the horn. I'm going to take and put Vaseline all over the tank, fill this full of epoxy, slide my piece onto here, put a little epoxy so this glues to the leather and glue it up almost to the point to where the glue is solid. When the glue is close to being solid, I'll pull all of it off. That should leave the shape of the tang inside and then I will shape the rest of this to fit to where it looks appropriate on the knife. We'll see. All right, well, my plan worked pretty good. Um, the handle or the tang fits right up inside the horn with very little movement. So I went ahead and shaped this down and got it to a, a pretty decent fit up onto the guard. Uh, guard was a little bit more rounded than what it needed to be. Uh, so it was a little more difficult getting this shaped, but I thought it ended up turning out pretty good. I was able to get the pinhole drilled and uh, I'll go get this sucker glued up. Okay, here it is all finished up. I'm very excited about the way it's turned out. Got the horn nice and shiny. I did a CA glue finish on it. Thought the pattern on this twist Damascus over the top of this core still came out beautiful. Uh, thought the shape looked good. Something very unique, something that I would not normally do. Uh, and I enjoyed the process. I'm glad that I went with the guard and stayed with it. I think the twist uh, pattern would have looked pretty good, but I think this turned out rather well itself. Uh, appreciate you watching and uh, hope you tune in next time as well.